Jameson, you've been around the block. Your college experience now brings you to Ohio State. Uh, a myriad of choices. What made you decide on the Buckeyes? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is entering the transfer portal for a second time. You kind of know what you want. And I knew I wanted to play at a high level, uh, to be able to compete at a high level and be able to have the opportunity to make the tournament. I think Ohio State offered that for me. And I think the biggest thing in recruiting is you want to go where you're wanted. And I felt out of all the schools and all the options I had, I think Ohio State wanted me the most. And I felt that immediately. And I think you know, the, the fit that they presented to me and then the people that they lost and the people that they had in that great Big Ten tournament run, it was, you know, a match made in heaven. Was there any trepidation going from Big Ten school, transferring and staying within a Big Ten school, knowing friends now become foes? Yeah, I think that was one thing. Uh, within the recruiting, I, I knew at the beginning that I didn't really want to stay in the Big Ten just yeah. because I'd been in here for two years and understanding how brute and how physical the league is. I uh, maybe wanted to branch out, but then I think what, what I had talked to with a bunch of coaches is the fact that you're familiar with the league. You've been in the league for two years, and I think that's something that is really a benefit. And like you said, friends turn foes. I still have a lot of friends on, on the Gophers on Minnesota that you know are looking forward to playing that game. So it'll be a tough one, but you know I'm excited just to, to go out there and compete. Well, you still have family that's a part of uh, said foe at Minnesota. Mm -hmm. your, your sister, Amaya, is a guard there at Minnesota. How difficult was it? She doesn't stop being your sister. How mm -hmm. difficult was it, though, to leave one institution and come over to another one in Columbus? Yeah, I think it was a hard choice to make. Obviously, I think last year I wanted to go pro and turn pro, but then looking at it, you know, I didn't have the best year myself. I had an injury. There was a lot of things I was dealing with off the court as well. So I think, you know, in the end, you have to do what's best for yourself, and I think making the decision to, to leave Minnesota uh, was was what's best and what was in my cards. A lot of people asking, uh, Ohio State fans, we know Jamison is a bucket getter. We know this guy will provide the scoring punch on the wing. How else do you expect to elevate this team? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is understanding that I've been in college for four years and understanding that I have experience and that I can help uh, lead these younger guys. You know, we have a lot of younger guys, but you look at what the younger guys did last year to finish off the year. You know, they have helped me adjust and helped me understand what Ohio State is, what the Buckeye family is, what the culture is here. So I think that's it's a two-way street between me and the young guys understanding that how can I lead these guys and how can I help these guys, but also how can they help me understand and fit into my place and into my role. And I think for me, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is I need to be a better defender and help rebound. And just I think I just want to be out here and contribute to winning. Jameson, as talented as you are, and I've seen it firsthand in games I've called in your uh, earlier part of your career, you never had the ability to enjoy playing on a winning team mm -hmm. with a winning record. Right. Uh, that is That stood out to me, knowing mm -hmm. your ability. Uh, how much does that drive you to make this Ohio State team, one coming off a losing season, uh, get back to that winning form? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Coming from a winning high school program, I actually won a state championship in this building. So I, I've been around winning, and I understand what it takes to win. But in college, like you said, it's been hard for me uh, on the teams I've been a part of to win. And I think... You know, not to say that I, I have done everything I could, but I think there's a lot of things where I missed out and a lot of things that I've learned on how to how to contribute to winning and how to help. And I think, like you said, the, the year that Ohio State had last year, it's where I see it as an opportunity to come in and help this team win and contribute to winning, like I said, and that hopefully make it to March Madness, which is, you know, the number one goal of mine, just to go out here and, and play in March. You know, you're sitting in sitting in these past four years uh, looking, at, looking at the TV in March and think, thinking, man, like, I haven't played in that yet. You know, how am I how am I going to tell my kids that I haven't played in March Madness when I'm sitting and watching with them? So that's obviously the ultimate goal for me and, and the ultimate goal for this team. What did you know about Ohio State as a foe mm -hmm. when you were playing at Minnesota and going against this team? What was the expectation when you see Buckeyes are on a schedule? Yeah, I think it's a well coached, disciplined team. You got a lot of talent as well, and I think that's what we have this year. You know, you got a lot of talent. We're very disciplined. Have a lot of, you know, guys who are willing to be coached and understanding that. There's a lot of guys here who are going to hold each other accountable, and I think that's what, what it takes to be winning and what it takes to have a winning program. So I think that's the biggest thing that I have seen uh, playing them three times now here at Minnesota. So now to be a Buckeye, you know, I'm just trying to emulate what the culture is and what I can do to, to help win. Jameson, one of the things I've always appreciated about the student-athlete is People know you as a basketball player, mm -hmm. a very good basketball player, but you have talents beyond that, yep. talents that I don't possess. I was pretty much just a basketball player. Mm -hmm. uh, what is one of those things? Uh, I know you're musically inclined. Right. Can you share with us? Yeah, so I've played saxophone since I was in fifth grade, I want to say. Then again, I don't play it as much as I used to right now, but you know, I think just doing stuff outside of basketball is something that my mom really tried to get me engaged in uh, from an early age. You know, I played piano from you know first grade up until I did uh, pick up the saxophone and then saxophone up until 10th grade and then I transferred high schools where 
you know, I didn't really want to join the band, but, you know, I was in the pep band as a, as a student and just doing those things is, is something that I really appreciated my mom for just because, you know, you don't want to be so, you don't want to be a one trick pony when it comes to sports. You got to be able to branch out and do other things that can help you not only, it can help you in sports, but just in life as well. Well, what I may lack in said talents, I always come prepared. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get a piano in here, but we thought maybe we could come with it. Is that a saxo beat? What, is, what like, what is, are we I've familiar with what, but you could probably play it. It resembles a sax a little bit. Oh yeah, a little bit. What's a go-to uh, tune that you can maybe give us here? Um, Act like I, this is a recital of sorts. So, man, I haven't, I've never seen one of these. But no, my favorite song is um, um, Birdland. It's this, when I was in jazz ensemble back in sixth grade, I want to say, it's, it's just a great song that, it's got a lot of different beats and yeah. I think, um, you know, I don't know it by heart, but I know kind of the opening measures that um, that we play, and I think it's something that uh, the one thing is I remember, you know, not being able to really play it well, and I think just grinding and grinding and grinding and getting better at saxophone. So we had this smart music thing where I could just pull up any song and just play it, and for my practice time. So I took a lot of time seventh and eighth grade just to really get better, and then it ended up switching from the alto to the to the baritone saxophone, and then you know I was a bigger guy, so it kind of kind of fit with the big saxophone, but. I think it's something that, you know, I actually love doing and it's something that I've, uh, I've really enjoyed and I, like I said, I appreciate my mom putting me in band and putting me in the piano. Well, let's call this one Big Guy Little Sax. Can we play like maybe a, a little something yeah. here just to taste? <laughs> that, is a, that is quite the taste right there. Uh, look, I wish I could have brought a better saxophone no, for you. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit more about that. The saxophone was also therapeutic for you mm -hmm. when you were going through your recovery and injury. How was that the case? Yeah, so, you know, I wasn't able to do much at home. I was, you know, elevating my foot and just really just bedridden at that time. So during the injury, I had my saxophone under the bed and I was like, man, like, I haven't pulled this thing out in a while, so let me, uh, let me play some tunes. So I'd just sit on the couch and, you know, get my fingers working and just play little tunes. And I know my mom heard it and I know she uh, maybe didn't appreciate the loud noises I was playing in the basement, but it was just something to do because, you know, you get sick of TV, you get sick of watching shows and, it was kind of hard for me to play video games at that time too, just because you know you're laying back and I'm someone who plays on a monitor. You're right in front of it, so you know it's just something else to do and just something to keep me occupied in those two weeks where I had to keep my foot elevated and just you know stay in bed basically. Jameson, when people talk about basketball players, naturally they they lend themselves to comps. Mm -hmm. Who does who does this guy's game resemble? I have thoughts of my own about your game, but you had some pretty lofty comparisons, and I tend to agree with them. Who do you see? in the professional ranks that your game resembles? Yeah, I think, you know, my favorite player in the NBA is Klay Thompson. Uh, he's someone that can shoot the ball, but not only shoot the ball, create for himself off of two to three dribbles. And I think that's something that I have come to learn to do from high school even to now that you don't need to over dribble to score and then playing off of screens, playing off of, you know, different actions for, for shooters. And I think the one thing that I need to up in my game to be more like Klay Thompson is the defensive aspect. And I think that's something that you know, he grinded on, he worked on, and I think that's something I've been trying to do here at Ohio State, which is, you know, going to help me play more on the court and help me be a better basketball player. Any designs on dotting the I someday? Big thing at Ohio State. You know, that would be special. I mean, to see that for my first football game when I was out there, uh, to watch that tradition and to watch this, how it worked, and then also at halftime, that's something I really appreciate within uh, college sports. You know, one thing I always look at is the band, just because I was one of those kids who was in the pep band in high school, so... That's one thing I've always looked at and always listened to songs, and I kind of sometimes know the songs and know how to play those songs. So, but I think dotting the I, I mean, that's it's that's special. You know, seeing that, like I said, firsthand was it gave me chills, honestly, just because you know I have some sort of music background and understanding what it takes to be in that, you know, choreography and to be in sync and to understand that it's you can just tell how much it means to the people of Ohio and to, uh, to the people who are fans of Ohio State. Well, this is kind of unfair because Amaya is not here to defend herself. I am going to give you this platform mm -hmm. and pretty much final say. Who's the better basketball player? Who wins one on one? I would say me. I don't think I've ever lost. I mean, maybe I've lost her a few times in basketball, okay. but you know, I think our games are pretty different. Actually, in the end, uh, she's more of a facilitator, point guard who can score as well. But her defense is something that you know I wish I had. You know, but I think in contrast, she wish she had my shooting. So we kind of balance each other out with how we play. But I would say, you know, obviously I'm gonna. Toot my own horn and say I'm gonna win. No pun intended. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> if you do, you ever utilize each other as sounding boards? You know, mm -hmm. confidants, advisors. Uh, you guys are experts in the field in your own right. Do you ever lean on each other? Yeah, I think the biggest thing when I when I leaned on her was during COVID. You know, there wasn't much that we could do, so there were days where we would go out um, to the park and just play. 
uh, go out and get shots up because gyms were closed and then we go on runs together. There was stuff that, you know, we got really close in that time and I appreciate her for that and just, you know, I'd go over there and spend time with her and just, just to do stuff just because, you know, like I said, you're in COVID, you're in times that are hard. So you got to figure out a way to get better. And I think we really did that. And she had a really good senior year. ended up after that, ended up winning uh, Miss Basketball here. So, you know, just to see how much she's grown since, since she was a young girl, uh, just to see how much she's changed and how much she's developed is something that, you know, is really special to me.